To better understand Redux app structure and data flow, today we'll be building a simple React bulletin board app and manage the global state with Redux Toolkit. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn more about Redux app structure and data flow by building a simple React bulletin board. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Please note this tutorial is not for absolute beginners in React. It is for those that already know React and are beginners with Redux and Redux Toolkit. If you are a React beginner, you should complete the React JS for Beginners full course on my channel, or one like it, at a minimum before attempting this Redux series. We're going to jump right in from where we left off in part one of this Redux Toolkit series. And if you're new to Redux Toolkit and haven't watched part one, there's a link to the playlist in the description below. And to give credit where credit is due, the foundation for this code is from a project in the Redux Toolkit docs, but I've modified it for today's tutorial. And I'm going to move at a slightly faster pace today because I know we're not beginners with React, so comment below if you like this new faster pace. In Visual Studio Code, you can see I've got a project already open and I've already installed Redux Toolkit. And essentially, you could get this starter code, you could download it from the source code link in the description for the resources, or you could just delete the counter feature from the first tutorial in this series if you've completed that and you'll have this beginner code. So we've already got Redux Toolkit installed and you can see React here in the dependencies. After that, if we go to the index, you'll see we've already imported the store and the provider. We're providing the store to the app. And of course the store is created and we don't have a reducer in here right now because I've removed that counter feature that we had in the first tutorial of this series. So this is basically where you want to start any time you would use Redux Toolkit with an app as far as creating a store, importing that store and the provider, and then providing the store for the global state to the app. So we've got that completed already. I've got some CSS that you can get from the resources as well if you download the code, or you could just supply your own. And then in the app, we have just a basic function component here that is empty. I've switched the div, you typically get to a main element, and that's about it. So let's get started. Our first step today will be to add a new feature in our features directory. And if you don't have a features directory, go ahead and create one now inside of the source directory. So here we're going to add a posts feature. So we'll add a post directory. And then inside the post directory, let's create a posts slice. And slice is where we divide up our state. So this will have everything to do with the posts we create. And we want to start with import create slice, and that should come from Redux Toolkit. And there it is. Now I'm going to just paste in some code and we can see what we would have in this slice. So we start with an initial state and I have just hard coded in a couple of posts. I'm going to press Control B to hide the file tree right now so you can see all of that. And so we just have two posts with ID, title, and content. And this is an array with two objects, really. And then we've got our post slice that we create, and it accepts a name, so we name that post. Then we pass in the initial state that I've just hard-coded above. And then we have reducers, which I haven't supplied any of those yet. And then we export the post slice reducer. Okay, I'll save this file. We'll show the file tree again because anytime we create a reducer like this, we need to add it to the store. So let's go back to the store.js now. And here we need to import the reducer. So we're going to import posts reducer, and this will come from, and then we go up a folder, and then we go into the features folder, and then we go into the post folder, and finally we find our post slice right there. Okay, after we've imported that, we need to put it in the reducer as well. So here we'll say posts, and then we pass in the posts reducer. And we could put a comma now, or we could do it later when we add another reducer. Right now, we'll just leave it like this and save. Now back in our posts feature, we need to go ahead and create a posts list component. So let's call this posts list.js. And we'll start this out by importing the use selector. So we'll say import use selector, and that comes from React Redux. After that, we can create a functional component, and I'll type RAFCE because I have ES7 snippets installed. Press tab, 
and I have a functional component already created for me. So that helps out quite a bit, but I'm going to change what's inside of it. So I'll just select this return and I'm going to paste in the rest of the code and we'll quickly review. So now we're using the selector that we imported and you can see we've got the state and we're just getting all the posts that are in our state. After that, we're defining rendered posts. So we're mapping over the posts and we're creating an article for each post, essentially creating a post here for each one that's contained in posts. We pull in the ID, the title, and the content. Notice we're using substrings, so we're just getting the first 100 characters there for that to preview essentially the post if it was a long post. And then we're using the rendered post in the JSX. So we've kind of pulled that logic up here instead of putting it in the JSX, and it makes that JSX very clean. And then of course we're exporting the post list here at the bottom and we save the file. Now before we move on and use this component, we need to talk about this use selector because right now it receives the state and then we get state.post. But what if the structure of our state changed? Right now this component needs to know something about the state. It needs to know we go state.post. It could be state.post.something else in the future. We don't know. So it would be better if we create a selector in the slice and then export it. And that way, if the shape of the state ever changed, we wouldn't have to go through and change each component. We could just change it once in the slice. So let's do that. We'll go back to the slice and here, just above the export default, we'll go ahead and say export const and then let's call this select all posts. And we'll set this equal to an anonymous function that receives the state and essentially does what we did have in the component. So here's our state post. So this selects all the posts, but we're exporting this now. So let's save this, and then we can import it into our post list. So here we will say import select all posts, and that comes from our post slice. And then we can just use it right here instead of what we did have in the use selector. So we'll say select all posts, and this will work in the same way, but now if the shape of the state ever changes essentially, we'll just need to change it in the slice and not in every component. Now let's go to our app.js and import the post list component. So we'll say import posts list, and there I see it in the list below, and that comes from our features, posts, and then the post list component. And now we can use it inside the main element here in the JSX. So here's our post list and save. And now let's go ahead and open a terminal window with control back tick and type npm start to just see our progress so far. And I'm going to pull Visual Studio Code over here to the left side of the screen and we should see our React app start up over here in a new tab on the right side of the screen. And there we are. So we've got posts and we've got our two posts. It says learning Redux toolkit and the body says I've heard good things. Then we've got slices. And yes, the more I say slices, the more I want pizza. So that is what we had in our state. If we pull this back over and we look at this, I'll close the terminal here, but let's go back to the post slice. And here is our state. I'll hide the file tree so we can see it all. And there were our two posts. So yes, they appeared as we expected. Now we want to be able to add new posts with a form. But before we do that, we really need to create a reducer function that will handle the data we submit. So we're going to create a post added function that goes here inside of the reducers in the slice. I'm going to paste this in and we'll take a look at it. And so we've got post added and it receives the state and an action. And then we get the payload, which would be the form data that we send or we actually dispatch when we dispatch our post added. So we dispatch the action and then it of course has the payload that is the form data. And then notice we're pushing this to state. Now we'll talk about this state.push in just a second because if you are familiar enough with React, you know we don't usually mutate state and that's what dot .push would do to an array. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But right now, after we add post added, we also need to export that. So just under our selector, let's say export const, and then we'll have post added, and then that's going to equal posts slice, if we can type that right, slice dot actions, and we save. So when we write this post added function, 
then create slice automatically generates an action creator function with the same name. Now, when we export our actions, we're actually exporting this action creator function that is automatically created. So that's why you don't see post slice dot actions above. It's just automatically created. So I know that could look a little confusing at first, but that is how that works. Now let's talk about the state dot push. And I'm used to writing state like I would spread in the state and then have the action payload as a new item instead of state dot push. But React Toolkit uses Emmer.js under the hood, and that allows you to to write your JavaScript like this, where you would normally be mutating the state, but it is not mutating the state. Emmer.js creates new state underneath. Now, realize this only works inside of the create slice. Anywhere else in your application, you still need to use the proper way of not mutating the state that you've probably learned as you learned React, if not before. However, inside of the create slice, you can use state.push and you can directly set the state in other ways as well. And Emmer.js will handle that. So it makes it easier to handle inside of here. And if you're curious, I'm going to provide a link below in the description to the page for Emmer.js. Now that we have our reducer function to handle the form data and we've exported an action creator, let's go back to our file tree and we need to create a new component and that would be the form component. So let's call this add post form .js. Now at the top, I'm going to import use state and there I see it in the list. After we've done that, I'm going to use RAFCE once again and press tab. And now we've got the outline of our add post form component. And then once again, inside, I'm just going to select what we have here and paste the basic form component and we can go over it. It looks like, is there an error somewhere? Possibly, I'll find that as we go. Worth a short discussion here, we've got use state. So just because we're using Redux doesn't mean we won't use state in some components because this is a temporary state. It's just a controlled form input for title and content. And so we don't really need to send those to the global state. They're just for this component. So we only want to send things to the global state that other components would possibly use throughout the application. And eventually we could expand this application where other components would be using what we're sending to the global state, although this is a simple example. Nevertheless, title and content are just going to be using state here because it's only for this component. Now, as we scroll down, we can see we've got an on title changed and an on content changed, and they're just using the set title and set content and getting the event target value. And that's a typical controlled form. So that's essentially what we have here in our form. And let's see if we can find where that error is. It looks like we're missing a parentheses down here. Yep. And now if we save, there's no more error, and we're exporting here at the bottom. So again, a basic form, you can download the source code or create it on your own, but you've got a form, label, input, controlled value, and of course the on change event for each one of these. We have not added the save logic yet, so we don't currently have an on click in the button to save the post, but that's coming right up. Let's go ahead and add the logic that we'll need to save any new post. So at the top, once again, we need to import, and this will be use dispatch. There I see it in our list, and that comes from React Redux. And now we also want to import a nano ID, there it is, and that comes from Redux JS Toolkit. Nano ID will help us generate a random ID. So you don't need to import something else like a, a package like UUID or something like that. Redux JS Toolkit already has Nano ID. Okay, one more import. Let's go ahead and import post added from our post slice. And now we can use that inside of the add post form. Okay, let's scroll just a little bit and underneath our on content changed, we're going to add an on save post clicked. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste this in and we will break it down. Let me save just so it formats better. Okay, our on save post clicked function, and this is what we will trigger with the button in our form to save. We're checking to see if we have title and if we have content value, then we're going to dispatch our post added action. 
And then that will get the ID that we create with the nano ID that we imported above from Redux Toolkit. And it will also pass the title and the content. Notice these are in an object. And then we're just setting the local state for the title and the content back to empty. And that should pretty much be it. So now all we need to do is go to our button and add the on click here at the bottom. So besides the type form, which we could put on a separate line, and we'll break that down to a separate line as well and come over. Let's put our on click right here. So we have on click. We'll set this equal to on save post click and save. Okay, I'll drag Visual Studio Code back over to the left and we can look at this. What we haven't done yet, I guess, is provide the form to the app.js. So once again, I'll drag this back real quick. We've exported the form. So now let's go ahead and import it to the app.js. And so that will be here and we'll say import. And this would be the add post form. There we go. And not an image abbreviation, but there it is from our features post add post form. And then once we have that, we just need to add it to the JSX. So let's add it above the post list. So we'll say add post form, close it out there and save. Now let's go back and see if it's showing up and if we can add something. And it looks like I missed importing the dispatch into the form. So once again, I'm dragging back. I'm going to go to the form, look at the top here. I've got use dispatch but we didn't set the dispatch once we got down into the form. And of course we need to do that as well. So we've got dispatch right here. Let's just set it right here at the top. We'll say const dispatch. I can spell dispatch, there we go. Set it equal to use dispatch. And there we should be good to go now. So let's go back. This time we're ready to go. So we can add a new post. And here I'm just going to say, hey there, test one, two, enter. And we've got our new post at the bottom of our post list right now. So the two existing ones we had, and then our new post is down here. So everything's working as expected so far. So right now the form is working, but it could be better. And let's talk about that. That's because right now it needs to know the details about the state once again in order to send it properly. It has to send a properly formatted object. And it would be better if we could abstract some of that. We don't want to duplicate this type of logic in every component that posts to our global state. So instead, we can handle this back in the slice with a prepare callback. And a prepare callback can generate unique IDs, format the data, return the object with the payload, and that's basically kind of what we're doing here. So this will really simplify our component and it will handle everything once again back in the slice. So let's go to the slice. So our first step here will be to add a colon after post added and start another curly bracket there. And so of course we'll have another curly bracket underneath as well. And we could save that much to get the proper formatting I think. Well, maybe not. What am I missing? So we'll fix this in just a second I guess. We need to put reducer right here and then we have a state action of course we've got our colon curly bracket reducer state action we've still got the state dot push with the action dot payload there oh and then we need a comma afterwards so let's go ahead and do that and then tab this in and then as we tab over our post added looks better already and now let's put our prepare callback in here right after the reducer. So it's still under post added. And now you can see we have prepare here. And here we're passing in the title and the content that we would get from the component. And then it returns the action payload as it needs to be formatted. So we have a return here and then we have our payload. And this is where we define the ID with nano ID. So we're going to need to import that here in our slice title and content. And it looks like underneath here, maybe we need one more curly bracket. Yep, to stop that error. But that, of course, provides a reducer and a prepare callback for our post added reducer function. So let's save this now. And then we'll go back to the top and import that nano ID before we forget. There we go. And now we've got both of those imported as well. And now let's go back to the add post form where we can simplify what we're doing right here. So instead of everything we were passing to the post added before, we'll just say title 
and content. And the rest will really be handled inside of our prepare callback function. And the benefit here is that our component, once again, doesn't even have to know the structure of the state at all. All of that is now handled inside of the slice, and we can just send the raw data that we need to. Now I'll grab Visual Studio Code, drag it to the left, and we can try another post again. So I'll say, hey, hey, and then my, my, save the post, and we look here at the bottom, and we've got hey, hey, my, my for the new post. Now the one we created before, of course, isn't there because we've modified the code and saved it, and then of course that is removed. But overall, everything is working as we expect. Now this is a good time to also bring up that there is such a thing as Redux DevTools. So let me grab that link for you, and then I'll bring it over here and put it in a new tab. And if we go to Redux DevTools, this is the GitHub page, and I'll link to this in the description, we can see that Redux DevTools is a browser extension that's available for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox, also as a standalone app, or even a React component. And it's a pretty good way to check your state and make sure things are working as you expect them to inside of your app. So I'll open up DevTools, and then after you've installed that, and I'm in Chrome, I'll go down here to Redux, select that, and we can see here's our raw state. It's a tree right now that we're looking at. If I drag this up a little, I'm not so sure I can do that. I've got a shorter screen sometimes. So there we go. I've got the posts, and each one of these are showing in a tree. You can also see a chart, and of course it'd be nice to have a little more room to see the chart, but I'm shrinking it with the scroll wheel, and there we can see it. It's pretty simple right now because we have a simple state. And then we can see it raw, so here we can actually see each post inside of our raw. And then you can also see the difference. So you can see the last action that was called into action, essentially. And I'm trying to find something to drag here, but I don't see anything to make this bigger for you on, on my screen currently. If I were to shrink my font and everything, as far as my zoom, it would probably be easier to see. But anyway, all of this is there. You can install Redux DevTools as a Chrome extension or whatever browser you're using. It looks like it's available for Edge and Firefox as well, a React component or a standalone application. And this might help you as you work with Redux. So I definitely wanted to mention it. I'm going to close DevTools now and drag the browser back over here to the right. I'll drag Visual Studio Code back to full screen display. And now we wanna add users to the application so we can credit the posts to their authors. But we wanna keep this as a separate feature. So we wanna separate all the logic and data from the post slice and we'll create a new feature called users. So inside of our features directory, let's create another directory here called users. And I'm on the wrong keys, there we go, <laughs> users. And then inside of users, we'll create a users slice. So again, users slice.js. Now inside of users slice, we're going to import create slice. There it is in our list. And we get that from Redux Toolkit. And then I'm going to paste in the rest and we'll quickly go over it as well. You can see once again, I've just got a hard coded initial state here with three users. And then the user slice has a name, it gets the initial state, and right now the reducers are empty. Notice I already created a select all users selector here that we can export, and then we're exporting the default user slice dot reducer. So we need to put that in the store, which will be our next stop. So let's go to the store.js, and now at the top here we'll say import users reducer. And that will come from, again, two dots, features, now users, and there inside we'll find our user slice. And here we'll just put it after the post reducer. So we'll put a comma and then users, and we'll have our users reducer. So now when posts are made, we want to go ahead and add the user ID to the post so then we can look up the username and of course give them credit with the post. So let's go back to the post slice and there we need to go ahead and change this prepare to also accept a user ID. So we'll put user ID right here, and then we're of course going to put that inside of the payload as well. So here we'll just have user 
ID. And now to send this user ID data to the prepare function, we need to go back where it is coming from, and that is the add post form. So at the top, we're going to do a couple of things. We've got use dispatch. Let's go ahead and bring in the use selector. And now, of course, you can see we changed our code earlier when we simplified it with that prepare function in the slice. So we don't need the nano ID here anymore. We can remove that import. But then underneath our import of post added, let's go ahead and import. And here it will be the select all users. And that comes from our user slice. OK, now that we have that, we also need to have some more temporary state. So we could just press shift alt and the down arrow to copy down the content state and we'll select content here and change this to users and set users or do i want user id i actually i want user id there so let me select both users and say user id that looks better so that's a temporary state that we will track here in the component and we will pass along with whatever the post is then to the global state now we need to go ahead and get our users. So here we'll say const users and let's set this equal to the use selector that we imported. And then inside of there, we'll use the select all users. And there we'll save. Oh, I left off the S. There it is, and now save. Now, just like we added to the state where we have user ID, we're going to need a content changed here as well. So we'll take this down and we can change this. Instead of on content changed, let's call this on author changed. And then inside of that on author changed, instead of set author here, which would also make sense, we're going to set user ID. And I noticed I left a T there in the author. So there we go. Now on author changed. Now inside of our dispatch with the post added, we're going to have the title, content, and the user ID to send as well. Okay, underneath the on save post clicked, going to go ahead and create the options menu right here called user options. So let's quickly look at this. We're mapping over the users we brought in and then we're using an option element to have a key and a value and then we display the user name. But of course the value that we are sending is that user ID. And that's what we will grab with our on author change that sets the user ID here. And then we send that user ID state that we set above right here to our post added function. So now let's add those options to our form and I'm going to put them between the title and the content, I believe. So we'll just put it right here and paste that in. We'll get it reformatted. But you can see we have a label for the select element. And then of course the options here go inside, but we're starting out with one blank option as well. Now there's one more thing we can do for this form. So I'm going to scroll back up and just above user options here, I'll paste this in. We're defining can save and we're essentially checking to see if the title, the content and the user ID are all true right here. And if that is true, then if can save is true, we can enable or disable the form button. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll scroll down here and let's look at the different attributes for the button. And we'll set this last one to disabled, which disabled would be true if you could not click the button. So what we want to do is say the opposite of can save. So if can save is true, then disabled is false and save our file. And now we should be able to see how this works. So I'll quickly drag Visual Studio Code to the left and you can see our button is disabled. But now if we put in the post title and I say my rug and then here I'll choose Dude Lebowski and then I can say they took my rug and you can see as soon as we have content in all three of these the button is enabled. But if we remove the content the button is not working. So that's the goal we wanted there. Now we're sending the user ID from our form as we dispatch our post added right here, our post added function. So we're sending all this back to the prepare callback that then gets added as a payload. But what we haven't done yet is set anything to actually display the author. So we need to do that next. And we'll do that by creating a new component inside of the posts feature. So here we go and let's call this post author.js. We'll start at the top by importing 
the use selector. And after we get use selector, we also want to import select all users. And now after we have both of those, I'm going to use RAFCE once again, press tab, and we get a post author component. This is a simple component. Once again, I'll remove what is inside of it and just paste in some of the logic here. So we've got our users and we're using the use selector with our select all users selector that we created in the slice. And now we're defining author. And here we call the find array method on users and we're just finding the author. So once we get the author, if he exists, he or she, I should say, then we display the name. But if the author doesn't exist or just isn't there at all, I guess if you can't find the number or one hasn't been provided, then we get unknown author. And that's a very simple component. So let's go ahead and save. Now let's go to the post list and import this component. So here we'll say import post author. And I see it popping up in our list. And then once we've got the post author, we'll put it below the title and the content. And I've got just a little bit of formatting here, so I'll save. I could remove that empty line if we want. But what I've got is a paragraph, and I applied a class called post credit. And now we have our post author component, and you can see the user ID is passed from the post dot user, and this needs to be user ID right here. There we go, and save. Now we'll look at the results in just a second, but now if we go back and look at our post slice, remember our initial state. We didn't provide a user ID here. We have a post ID, a title, and a content. So let's see what happens with that, as well as any new post we create that should have a user ID. So I'm going to drag this to the left, and I've got a user ID problem here in the post author we just created, so I think I know what it is. And yes, we forgot to pass it in up here. So this is really what we need to destructure and have the user ID to receive the prop that is being passed in. So we put that pass it into the post author and all should be good. Let's go back and look at the post list once again where that is passed in. And so here we go, user ID is being passed in so we needed to receive it and that's what was missing. Okay, dragging this back to the left, we're all good to go here. We've got Dude Lebowski, he's saying, hey, what about my rug? And then he says, this aggression will not stand. And save the post, let's take a look. And look, we've got an unknown author for the first two because remember our initial state doesn't even provide that user ID. So it just defaults to unknown author instead. But on the last one, we can see the author is now getting credit. Now it would be nice if we could also display the time the post was made in a user-friendly way here right beside the author. So let's do that next. I'll drag this back and we'll have Visual Studio Code in the full screen. And this will be part of the post data. So we'll once again go back to the post slice and I'll hide the file tree again again, and we can make some changes here. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is import a dependency. So I'll press control in the back tick. I'm going to exit right now for the application, and then we can type npm i, we're going to install, and then it's date-fns. And we'll install this date FNS package that will help us display the date in a friendly way for users. And with that completed, we can close the terminal and we'll have to restart the app in just a minute. But right now we'll go to the top and we'll import sub from date dash FNS. Okay, we've got sub imported and now we need to add the date to our initial state. So we'll break these out on separate lines here now. And now for the last part, we'll put in the date, and here we'll have date, and let me break this onto another line. And I'll click up here and I'll just paste this in real quick, but you can see we're using sub, so we're taking a new date object, and then we're essentially subtracting 10 minutes, and then we're also converting this to a string. And we could remove the comma for now if we want to, but this is how we're storing the data as this ISO string. So it's converting to a timestamp string. And let's go ahead and do the same thing now to our other post. And I'll put a comma here and come down to the next line and have date. And we'll break that down to another line. But here I'll once again paste in the sub. And instead of 10 minutes here, we'll make it five minutes. So they have different values. 
and save this much. But before we're finished, we also need to add this to the prepare. Now this isn't something that's going to get passed in like title content and user ID. We can just put it here inside of the content. So we'll go ahead and put it right here and then I'll just paste it, but it's date. And then we're taking whatever the new date is and converting it to that timestamp string. So essentially right when the post is made, we're creating a timestamp. I'll save this change and then back in the file tree, we need to create another new component and we'll call this one time ago. And there I started with the T, there we go, timeago.js. And now inside of time ago, we'll start with an import. So we're going to import and this will be parse ISO. And then we're also going to import format distance to now. And both of those are going to come from date-fns. After we've done that, we can go ahead and use RAFCE again if you have ES7 snippets installed as the extension, and there we get our time ago component. I'm going to try to avoid the mistake I made before with the post author, and remember to pass in the timestamp here at the beginning. After that, inside the component, I'll just paste in what we've got. Fairly simple again. So we start out with a time ago variable that is empty, and now if we have the timestamp, we're going to go ahead and create the date. We're going to parse that ISO that we created, parse the timestamp, and then we also get the time period with the format distance to now. And then we set our time ago to time period ago. So it's a user friendly way to read the date. And then we're just returning that right here. So let's save this and head back to the post list where we can import this. So just like we imported post author, we'll import time ago. And that is not what I wanted. I got the wrong tab there. So I'll try that again. Import time ago. And there it is. And now we can put it right underneath our post author. So I'll copy that line down, change that to time ago. And then this is going to be timestamp right here. And inside of timestamp, whoa, got a little extra. Inside of timestamp, we're going to put the post dot date and that's what gets passed in. Now we need to restart our app to look at these changes. So once again, I'll do npm start and we'll get that going. I'll drag Visual Studio Code to the left. There we go, we've got everything compiled and let's take a look. So we've got unknown author 10 minutes ago, unknown author five minutes ago. Let's try a new post again. We'll say, hey, hey, and then Neil Young. And now we can say, my, my, save the post. And let's look at the bottom less than a minute ago. So that is also working as we expect it to. But as we look at this, wouldn't it be nice to see the new post we made show up here at the top instead of the bottom? So we can see that new post right away. Let's make the changes that will make that happen. So let's drag Visual Studio Code back. I'll close the terminal. And now inside of our post list, I'll paste a line of code. And I bet, I, yes, I'll need to hide that file tree again with Control B. So let's look at the ordered post that we're defining. We're taking all of the posts and then let's look at this in reverse order. So we're sorting the posts and this locale compare will return a negative one or a positive one or a zero based on if one is greater than the other. So it converts that date string and it lets our sort method here, our sort function, handle this AB comparison. So then we're sorting all of the posts by the date string. Slice is going to return a shallow copy of the array. So we're essentially creating a new array then, and that's what we're storing in ordered posts. So with that change, I need to select ordered posts. I'll get rid of this extra line. So we're not going to map over posts anymore here. We're going to map over the ordered posts. And now let's save. And once again, I'll drag Visual Studio Code to the left. Let's look at everything. And hey, our Neil Young post is still there, but it's on top now. So 12 minutes ago, seven minutes ago, two minutes ago, and you can see that things are now in that reverse order that we need. So the most recent post is on top. These posts look okay, but I think they would be better if we could actually add reactions for the posts as well. So let's do that. I'll pull Visual Studio Code back over so we can see it in the full window. And we're at the posts list right now. We need to go back to the post slice because anytime we add new data, that is the first place to think about. What are we data are we dealing with? It still deals with the post. So this is where we'll go. 
And in our initial state again, for the two posts that we have in here, let's go ahead and add the reactions here first. So it will be an object. So we've got our reactions object, and now we've got five different options. So we'll have five different reaction buttons. And let's do the same thing for the second post. And we can save that, but then we also need to handle this in that prepare function as well. So any new post that is created needs to be prepared and have these same reaction options as well. So there, this will go ahead and add the reactions to any new post. And now we need to add a new reducer that will actually update the reaction count when a user clicks any of these buttons. So here we are in the reducers and we've got post added that has a reducer and a prepare. So let's just follow this down to the bottom and after post added, we'll put a comma and I'll paste in our new reducer here, which is reaction added. And it receives the state and the action. And then we're going to deconstruct the post ID and the reaction from the action payload. And there we'll have the existing post and then we will find what the post is from the post ID and we'll update the reaction count. Once again, notice this would normally be mutating the state as we just increased that. But because we're in the create slice, this is handled by Emmer.js and that lets us write code like this that would normally mutate the state, but underneath the hood, Emmer is making sure we are not mutating the state. Remember, once again, you can only do this inside of the create slice. Okay, now remember, once we've added this new reducer here, reaction added, then Redux Toolkit automatically creates that action creator that we need to export to use in the components. So then after our post added action creator, we're also going to export reaction added, and that comes from the post slice.actions. Now, just like we did with post author and our time ago component, we need to create a reaction buttons component. So let's do that. Reaction buttons.js. Now at the top of reaction buttons, we're going to import use dispatch. And after use dispatch, we're also going to import reaction added. And we got that from the post slice. And now let's go ahead and paste our reaction emoji. It looks like I missed the C in const when I copied that. So we have our reaction emoji object now, and this provides a object lookup. So we have thumbs here, thumbs up as the key, and then we have the emoji as the value on the right, and that follows that same structure. Now I'm going to come down here and use RAFCE, and that creates our simple component here at first for reaction buttons. Now, once again, we're going to receive something, and that will be the post. And then inside of the component, I'll paste in the body here, and we can go over it quickly. Hide the file tree so you can see it all. So we've got the post, and the, here we're creating the dispatch, and then the reaction buttons. Well, it's an object lookup that we have up here, right, that receives the reaction emoji. So we say object.entries, and then we pass in that reaction emoji, which allows us to map over everything. The key is the name, and then the emoji is the value. So now once here inside of the JSX that we're returning, we can refer to the name, and then later on we can refer to the emoji as well. Besides that, we're receiving the post in the component. So here we can dispatch reaction added and pass in that post ID and the reaction that we expect to receive back in the post slice where we have the reducer. And to finish out the component, we see we're going to return a div that contains our reaction buttons JSX that we created here. And of course we have the default at the bottom. Now we need to go back to the post list and import this. So here we go, we'll import reaction buttons from reaction buttons, there it is. And now inside of our article, inside of the JSX, we can use this component, reaction buttons, and now it's going to receive the full post. So we just pass in the post, not posts, but post, the individual one, and we can save. And now let's go back and look at our application once again. I'll drag this to the left, and you can see we've got reaction emojis here for each post. And I could even make another new one. I can say, hey, hey, where's my rug? 
That is a reference to the Big Lebowski movie, by the way, if you're not familiar. So here we go. We've got our posts. We can say thumbs up. Everybody's supporting the dude, wanting his rug. And everything is keeping count like it should. Looks good. And now if we add one more post. My, my, from Neil Young. Hey, hey. We add that. Let's look. And yes, we've still got the count here for Dude Lebowski's post and for our unknown post. So all the reaction emojis are now working as well. So I hope overall this has been a very good exercise for learning about the structure and data flow used in Redux Toolkit. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.